How do? So, a luthier's thicknessing gauge. Something that can measure how thick you're carving out either acoustic stuff or maybe you're doing a hollow body guitar and you want to see how far you've gone. Can you go a little bit deeper? A luthier's thickness engage is the perfect tool and you can buy one ready-made from places like Stumac and they'll cost you about £175, which is quite a lot of money, isn't it? Or you can spend about 25 quid on the actual gauge and build the frame yourself. Get in! Okay, so I've sketched out here what I actually want to make. Um, what I've done is I've made sure that between the gauge, which is that, so between the point of the gauge and the innermost section is definitely wide enough to cover half of that detail. So on the inside of there, I've got, well, nearly 10 inches at that point, and from the halfway to the edge of this guitar is short of eight. So I would have to be making a massive guitar to run out of internal space that way. I've also made it a lot deeper than the standard thickness engages that you can buy straight off the shelf. Um, so this one, again, the width I need across that way um, is only about four inches. That is just short of four. But of course, you're never going to carve a full guitar in one go. It's at least going to be split down the middle. So I've got plenty of thickness to play with in there. Now, one design that I am putting in that isn't available off the shelf is I'm going to make this hinged. So a lot of them are just the same thickness all the way through. It's about an inch and a half at the most. Um, and if you're going any deeper than that, you scoop it because it doesn't open. I'm going to put a hinge on this so you can go around something to get that extra width on there. So what wood are we going to make this out of? I'm going to use plywood. It honestly doesn't matter. Any scrap wood that you have, you can make this frame out of. You've just got to make sure it's strong enough. It's not going to flex really, really easily. I'm going to use this plywood. It's thick enough. So this is 18 mil plywood that I can drill the eight mil hole. So this section at the bottom here is gonna slot in and I might even put a dab of glue depending on how tight that's, that section is so that doesn't move. But that's an eight mil hole. So whatever you're using needs to be slightly thicker than eight mil. This is an 18 mil, so I've got plenty to play with. So we can see up close how we've got two sections to this. So this bottom half, which goes up and around up to there. And then the top section, which comes round and flows into that section. Now this area here is to make sure that this closes to a set depth. So as everything hinges on this point, we can open and it closes and that will lock it so it won't close any tighter. So we know this is always going to be accurate at this end. So I'm gonna cut this bottom half out first, rather than cut it all out of one and then try and split it round there, because that's not gonna be very accurate. I'm gonna cut it out in two pieces. So we're gonna do this bottom section first. The only important parts here are that we have a nice flat edge at this point, and that this is smooth. I've measured this off at a 26 mil circle because I've got a 26 mil force in a bit, which makes that easy to cut out. And that line there is quite important because that gives us the full depth for the mouth that we need. out and stuck that top section on and this is why I wanted to do them separately so I can actually use this cut out bottom part to make sure it's going to be as, as good a fit as I can get um, so I can position this where it needs to be making sure that that's going to go up a little bit and push that in a fraction that's quite important we're now flush with this edge along here so again that stops going to work 
and then I can use the same forcing bit I used on here to just mark off where the center point is on there. So now I've got a dent on here and then just using one of these, I can put that in the dent there, draw around it and we know that's gonna fit nicely. <laughs> And with that, we have our clapperboard frame, if you like. So it's, you can see it stops there, everything's great. So all we need to do now is make the hinge part on here, remembering not to glue the middle part. Right, okay, so while the hinge is gluing on that point, uh, we need to drill a hole through here. So I'm going to cut an 8mm hole in here. Right, so these have had over an hour to set, more than long enough. So we've just got to put this in here. Ooh, it's quite snug, which isn't a bad thing. So I'm going to push that right in to where it needs to be like that and then a simple six mil hole all the way through all three of them got some six mil doweling And with that, we have a thicknessing gauge. How about that? So the actual gauge itself um, currently is about 23 pounds. So you're saving about 150 quid on the Stumac version. And this opens and closes so we can do more work. We can do deeper measurements as well. Uh, now I have set this so that when it's closed fully, it does push the gauge in a little bit so when this is closed up here which is what we're always going to check it is pushing that up a little bit but that's okay because when I turn this on it's currently telling me that I'm depressing that by a centimeter now all I need to do is press the zero button and suddenly we're working to accurate measurements again so as I open that out initially it'll give me a minus number and then I can stick whatever it is into there close that up and running out of hands and as long as I close this gap here again that's going to give me that accurate measurement on the screen so if saving 150 pounds and spending an afternoon in your workshop is well worth it to you well make one of these in the meantime watch this video click all these buttons that are hanging on down here and I'll see you soon god bless